Hello, and in today's Five Minute Friday, we will continue the discussion we started in the last video where we covered RTK and PPK. If you've not already seen that, I recommend that you go and watch that video before starting here. In that video, we learned that RTK and PPK are ways of correcting the geolocation of the individual photos to provide centimeter level accuracy. To do that, you needed a base station on a known location and an RTK module on the drone, even if RTK is not running at the time of the flight. Now we'll move on to ground control points or GCPs. GCPs are markers that are placed in known locations around a site. These are targets that are easily visible from the drone, so they must have a clear view of the sky wherever they're placed. To place them, You'll use a GNSS receiver placed on a known location and another receiver that will be receiving the corrections as you move around the site. The GNSS receiver that moves around is known as the rover. Like the drone in RTK, the rover receives the GPS signals and a correction signal to provide centimeter level accuracy. In fact, people often don't realize that when you're setting GCPs, the rover is in fact using RTK. The markers don't have to be targets, they can be anything on the site that does not move, so you could use something like a fire hydrant or anything else that has an easily identifiable center that you can measure. The center of each target is measured and that information is logged for use once the processing of the map starts. Once your locations are marked, you capture photos of the site in the usual way ideally using RTK or PPK to correct your images as this will allow for any later processing to be more accurate and your photogrammetry software won't have to work so hard. But an advantage of using GCPs is that an RTK enabled drone is not required. When you load the photos collected into your photogrammetry software, you'll then find the photos that contain targets and then use a process to tag the center of each of those targets and match it up with the data you collected earlier. The exact process for tagging GCPs is going to depend on the software that you're using and some systems are more automated than others. Now the software processes the map but crucially uses the center point of each GCP to adjust the map position by shifting it over until the center point of the GCP in the image matches the location collected. You'll need at least five GCPs for this to work properly, as the position of the map doesn't only need to be shifted left or right, but also might need to shrink, grow, or even rotate, and you can't make those adjustments with only one point. The software takes care of all this using some sort of magic that I don't really understand. But if all goes well, the result will be a map that has been adjusted to match the measurements on the ground. And once again, you have centimeter level accuracy. One important step that we have not touched on yet is checkpoints. When tagging the center of the GCPs, you will ideally tell the software if this is a GCP or it's a checkpoint. They're very similar things. However, GCPs are used to adjust the map, but checkpoints are not. The reason is simple. Since checkpoints are not used to adjust the map, if they're still in the correct location after you've applied all of the other adjustments, then you know the map is good. If they've moved, something is wrong and you need to start checking your processing. Once you've finished everything, process using RTK, PPK and GCPs and confirm that your checkpoints are still in the right location, you're now ready to deliver the map and any associated reports, including estimates of accuracy, to the client. Before we close out, I did want to mention propeller error points. These are special GCP targets that have a built-in GNSS receiver. This simplifies the process by combining the GCP location collection and the GCP placement. However, these targets and the associated software can be expensive, but they are a good solution. And for more information on that, see the propeller YouTube channel, which has some excellent free videos. Well, that's it for GCPs. I hope you found that useful. As always, I'd love to hear your comments. If you have anything you would like to deep dive into, please let me know and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.